Good evening. Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Welcome. <laughs> Hope you've had a lovely day today. <laughs> well, tonight's topic um, is Ayurvedic, and we have a guest speaker from India, and his name is Dan Wantari. Um, and for next week, um, our topic will actually be astrology, and we have a lady that will be um, talking to from America, and her name is Melissa Bruce. Um, yes, and tonight's um, meditation at eight o'clock, we'll, Ty Walking Deer will be hosting that, and it'll be a chakra meditation, so that will be lovely. So um, please join us on that. You also feel welcome to um, ask any questions. This is an interactive broadcast, so please do. You can find a little tab with nine dots up in the top corner of your screen. So please ask any questions and um, contribute to this conversation. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll introduce um, Darwan Tari and I'll just click on here so we can have a chat to him. <clears throat> and um, tell us about your name. Oh, <laughs> hi. Uh, my name is Dr. Dhanvantri. Namaste. Uh, I'd like to start with a small prayer. Namami Dhanvantari Madhi Devam Sura Suevandita Pada Padmam Loke Jarayu Bhayam Rutyu Nasham Data Ramisham Vividho Shadinam uh, basically, I'd like to explain you this. Uh, this is a prayer to Lord Dhanvantri. Lord Dhanvantri is known as the Lord of Ayurveda, the one who started Ayurveda. And uh, my parents, being from the traditional background of Ayurveda, my father, my mother, my grandfather, so they gave me this name Dhanvantri. Basically, the name Dhanvantri means one who is an expert in surgery. And uh, this is where they gave me the name Dhanvantri so that someone who can learn Ayurveda, someone who can go further in Ayurveda and make uh, Ayurveda more popular throughout the world. Namaste. Thank you. That's great. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that blessing. Yeah. I really felt that. <laughs> Um, now, tonight's subject is Ayurvedic, um, and the first question that we've got here is, what is Ayurveda? Uh, basically, Ayurveda is, in, uh, it is made from Sanskrit language. The word Ayurveda comes from Sanskrit language, and it is made up of two words. These two words basically are Ayu and Veda. Ayu, the word means life, and Veda means the science. That means Ayurveda together stands for the science of life. Ayurveda is not only basically a system of medicine or a petty or a way to remove the sufferings or disease, but it is the way of life. It tells us about many pursuits. According to Ayurveda, there are four pursuits of human life. That is, uh, there are four goals of human life, dharma, arth, kam, and moksha. Dharma, it is the religion, but not Hinduism or Islam or Christianity, not that religion. But as a human, what should be our religion? It should be humanity first. And this is what Ayurveda teaches us to follow. The other one is arth, that is money. Or uh, you may say the way of living this life. And that is where Ayurveda teaches us to be righteous in earning our daily earnings. Calm, that is our feelings or our desires. These desires are very necessary for human beings. Every human being has a desire. But to what extent should you allow that desires to go? Up to what extent? Should you control these desires? These all are uh, get together and have been incorporated in Ayurveda. The last one is Moksha. Everyone of us maybe knows Nirvana or uh, say salvation, the prime goal of human life. 
we all want to die and then we don't want to get rebirth again into this life of human beings which is full of sufferings and this is where ayurveda teaches us how to control your complete life it not only tells us how the human beings are born but how the human beings may die and this is where ayurved is such a great science it was developed by uh, many gurus many teachers of ayurveda which were basically saints they didn't have a uh, practical training like what we have of today's uh, modern knowledge or modern medical science but they had this bliss directly from the nature surrounding them ayurved ayurveda uh, the basic word uh, stands for the science of life where it teaches us what to eat what not to eat how to live our lives to follow truth to follow the rightest path and that is where ayurved uh, is something very great i feel okay um you know the way you express that it you can feel um a sense of um beingness or a connectedness yeah but thank you you described that very well <laughs> so on the quiz so um how has um aravida been sustained in india over time because we know that um there was the english um invasion there at one point and that but um yeah so it'd be nice for you to explain over that but also like the whole how is it in, yeah how has <laughs> ayurveda endured the time yes. uh the basic thing is ayurveda is a very age old science uh the first text of ayurveda Uh, that is uh, charak samhita uh, it was written by a person agnivesh uh, it was redacted and it was written uh, say about 5000 years ago and since then we can say there was a start of ayurveda in india basically because uh, this is the science which was developed in india and uh, as it says it has been related to the human beings uh, since the start of human life Uh, because everything around us is uh, somewhere or other way helpful to us right so uh, that is where ayurveda is a very very old science and ayurveda came into existence say about 5000 years ago uh, the students at that time used to learn ayurveda from the saints or their teachers uh, india had a system of schooling which was very different from the modern uh, schooling which we have today at that time what used to happen was someone uh, uh who was very experienced someone who was very learned used to have a very small place of his own and then he used to keep students who used to come to learn ayurveda the life sciences and many other sciences together uh so uh, say about 10 to 15 students used to get together and stay at their teacher's house they then used to go back to their house houses and what they used to do is they used to stay at their teachers house they used to live their life with their teachers for about 10 to 12 years and it used to start after 12 years of age of a child so a child after being of 12 years of age he goes to his teachers house stays there for 10 to 12 years that is what we call as schooling or colleging according to india now these saints these teachers used to teach ayurveda but at that time because uh, there was no writing uh, so people could not uh, get together a book but later <coughs> just as can excuse me but later people used to started remembering these things and later when the uh, development of writing started they wrote a book and the first book amongst that was charak samhita that is the first book of ayurveda written by acharya charak who is known as the foremost doctor of ayurveda just like excuse me and now uh, when as time passed there were many new researches in ayurveda many people came with medicines of ayurveda and then people started using it in india it was the only system of medicine up to a very long time 
uh, and uh, because india was all, not only invaded by the britishers but it was also invaded by many others like you see uh, in the center at the start of the ad what we say the first ad or the second ad at that time started the buddhism when the buddhism came there was an idea of non violence at that time when ayurveda developed it was developed as in science where surgery was also practiced but as buddhism came into existence and it was believed that it was non violent it was uh, favoring non violence many people opposed the ways of surgery of ayurveda during that time so ayurveda surgery somewhere got harmed due to this then later came the muslims the islam uh, mughal emperors in india during the 14th century when this 14th century mughals came to india they again harmed india because they took their culture from the west or say from the extreme east and came to india and then they started having their own system of medicine and because of that i went again got depressed somewhere and then uh, in the 19th century when the britishers came they brought together with them the western system of medicine that was homeopathy or the modern medicine which started but because this because this modern medicine was giving results faster so people used to start getting the treatments from this western medicine and that is where ayurveda was harmed somewhere but because india has a very strong cultural and very strong uh, you may say familiar uh, culture what happened is the small things the spices the medicines the herbs that uh, that were in abundance in india surrounding us so it, ayurveda has somehow sustained up to this century but at present it again needs to be taken to the people because it is harmless the first thing is it is harmless it is very harmless it doesn't have any side effects it is very safe for human beings it is completely natural the medicines and the ways of life that are told according to ayurveda are really very good and uh, that is where uh, we see today's modern medicine uh, if someone goes for some modern treatment he has some of the other side effects and this is where it is lacking uh, the true sense of healing and that is where shamanism and ayurveda can help yes yeah definitely <clears throat> um are you right there <laughs> i'm right <laughs> uh okay so um going into the plants and the medicinal herbs um uh, methods of treatment um We were talking the other day about um, the mind, the medicinal herbs, and the external treatments and that kind of thing. Did you want to go into more about that, into more detail? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, methods of treatment of Ayurveda. As I said, Ayurveda is a <coughs> way of life, right? Uh, now, Ayurveda, when talks about treatment or methods of treatment, it talks about three things: sattva vajra chikitsa, sattva chikitsa. and sharirik chikitsa uh, in this uh, the one which i talked about sattva vajra chikitsa is the treatment of the mind what ayurveda talks about is in certain conditions in certain diseases even if you are able to counsel the patient or even if you are able to tell the patient that whatever is happening with him is only for time being it can help the patient a lot so this is where mind plays a very important role uh, this uh, uh, stays true in all the systems of medicine because we believe that if someone is uh, lost or if someone knows that oh i have this disease and it is not curable then the lifestyle of that person will be harmed more the person Uh, will have a very uh, bad last days i may say uh, if someone uh, for example i'd say if someone has cancer and because uh, he knows that oh cancer is incurable i'm going to die but if he believes that okay if i'm going to die if he has positivity he is going to live 
his last few days very positively and very good in a very well manner but if he believes that oh i have cancer and I, now i cannot do anything i am going to die now what will happen and if he goes into stress if he goes into worry it is going to affect all the people surrounding him yeah. his family members his friends everyone so this is where the first principle of ayurveda states that you have to treat the mind first then comes the treatment where we use medicines in certain diseases uh, where uh, we have been affected by a disease we need to give certain medicines the medicines of ayurveda are all herbal uh, they also we also use certain metals and metallurgy things but those are in only uh, say 5 to 10% of the medicines at present uh, rest all the medicine ayurveda uses for treating the diseases are all the uh, herbs and plants which are surrounding us ayurveda says that whatever is surrounding us is the most important for us it has also said the ways of treatment has to be surrounding the person like if someone comes from australia he has to be treated with herbs from australia or he has to have food from australia but if i start giving him spices and very hot substances from india it is not going to suit him because his body has not been uh, used to with that kind of materials so this is where the second uh, principle of ayurveda where we treat with medicines yeah, and then part. there comes the third part where there are external treatments these external treatments include uh, say meditation vibrations healing powers massage uh, and the purificate three therapies that is what i talked about panch karma the five purificatory therapies where we make the person do vomiting uh, we make the person uh, undergo purgation we give enema to the patient these are all under controlled medicated enemas medicated vomiting medicated purgation right so it is completely controlled and these are all the external therapies in this external therapies again the meditation plays a very important role when into meditation we are in complete control of our own mind and the whole body because meditation gives us a sense of total control all on ourselves yeah. uh, there are few things like vibrations uh, at the start as i said namami dhanvantari means i sang a prayer uh, a music therapy this these are all the positive energy positive vibrations or positive modes of energy transformation to a patient uh, according to uh, hindu mythology and ayurveda also even when a person is about to die uh, there is a shloka or a mantra uh, uh, in ayurveda which is said as matrambakam uh, yajamahim सुगंधम पुष्टिवर्धनम उर्वाकृतिपबंधनाय मृत्युर्मोक्षीयमृताय दिस श्लोक बेसिकली दिस मंत्र इट गिव्स अ वेरी पॉजिटिव वाइब्रेशंस एंड इट हैज बीन साइंटिफिकली प्रूवन इन मेनी पार्ट्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड पीपल इन यूएसए are uh, at nasa they are doing some research on the word om they are saying that this word om which we speak during meditation has a very good vibrational healing power even if we speak this om many of our worries many of our troubles are getting uh, subsided yes. because of these vibrations these vibrations are a way of healing and uh those meditation control of mind these all are things play a very important role in ayurveda along with the medicines of ayurveda the external therapies of ayurveda 
So Ayurveda basically is a complete science. I may again say uh, that it includes every aspect of treatment of many of the diseases. Many diseases of today's world like diabetes, obesity, hypertension are considered to be incurable by the modern medicine, by the Western medicine. But Ayurveda plays a very important role in controlling these diseases very well. There are many medicines in Ayurveda which doesn't cause any harm to the normal body but also treats these diseases. The Western medicine have medicines prepared for these things, for diabetes or for uh, hypertension or for obesity. But these in turn, after a long use of time, long period of time, causes some or the other harm to some other organs. So this is where Ayurveda uh, plays a very safe uh, side and uh, Ayurveda helps in healing the human body and helps to control and maintain the natural substance of the human body. Okay, great. Um, I just have another question there um, in regards to the medicinal herb side of things. So where you live in India, like, can you just tell us, like, um, what would be the 10 most popular herbs, medicinal herbs that you would actually use? Uh, see, uh, when I have to introduce a basic 10 uh, things or 10 herbs for Ayurveda, uh, you know Tulsi or uh, Asimam Sanctum. Uh, it is an herb uh, which is very famous in India. Everywhere in every house, you will see basil. And in English, uh, it is known as basil, right? Basil leaves. Uh, it is, uh, yes. And uh, in many parts of India and Asia also, Thailand also, you would find this at uh, every house. Every house will be having this basil leaves at their house because it keeps away all the, uh, you may say, the bacteria, all the infections. And it is very good in changing seasons. Like uh, now the rainy season has started. Once rain starts, many diseases are prone to happen, many infections will happen. In that things, uh, tulsi or basil leaf helps a lot. It helps relieving cough, it helps in obesity, it helps in uh, many other diseases uh, where secretions in the body have increased. So basil would be the first thing. A second thing would be cardamom. Cardamom is again very useful drug uh, many people have uh, problems with their digestion. Many people have pro uh, people regularly have problem with, uh, say, uh, headaches, migraines. In these things, cardamom may help. Uh, so the first one would be basil. Second one would be cardamom. Third one would be clove. The clove is very important thing because the clove helps us relieve all the throat problems. It also helps in digestion. It is also considered to be a very good brain tonic. This is where many less researches are done and people are trying to do, but these aromatic plants are really very helpful. Uh, fourth one I talk about would be aloe vera. Uh, it has uh, many external applications. It has uh, many other, uh, like when you have some hurt, and uh, you use aloe vera, uh, there is some sticky substance in its center. You apply it to a wound and the wound you will see magically recover very fast. The fourth thing would be turmeric. Turmeric is again a magic drug, a wonder drug of Ayurveda. Once you apply on the skin, on your face, there would be glow to your face. If you eat internally, it will help you maintain your strength your vigor, uh, your vitality, your throat, throat problems would be solved with it. Uh, the, another thing which I would talk about six would be gooseberry, avla. The gooseberry fruit again is very helpful. It helps us remove all the worries, all the strengths. It again is a very good brain tonic. It helps improve 
the uh, I may say the strength of the hair. Many people in today's world say uh, we have hair fall problem. Uh, hair uh, doesn't have luster. They use many types of chemicals for their hairs. But once they start taking this gooseberry, it is very good for it. It is also very good for the digestion. It is very good for the eyes. Once, uh, if a person in the winter season starts taking gooseberry uh, daily, at least one fruit of gooseberry or a small amount of juice of gooseberry, it is very good for them. Uh, another uh, drug which I would talk about uh, would be uh, the piper longum and uh, piper nigrum. Uh, that is the black pepper and uh, the other uh, from which we get the piper in, right? These two herbs are again very good uh, to maintain our overall health. And these are basically the spices which are used regularly in the Indian food also. So these helps maintain the strength of the body. They are not harmful to the body, but they are very good for the human body. Another thing uh, which I would like to talk about, which we get everywhere, uh, would be, uh, say, uh, the vasa, or uh, say it is the adhatoda vasika. It is a plant, um, I don't exactly know the English name, I know the Latin name. It is adhatoda vasika, and it helps relieve cough problems, it helps relieve uh, many other skin diseases. It helps in uh, itching of the skin. It helps in uh, many other problems also. Uh, the other thing which I would like to talk about would be, uh, we all know, I, I hope as you all do meditation, so you might be knowing Lord Shiva. Shiva uh, is the one who is considered to be the Adi, Yod, Adi Yo Yogic. That is the first one who started yoga. Uh, for this uh, Lord Shiva, we use the uh, plant known as bilver, agil marmalos. This leaf, uh, it is a three-leaved uh, organ. Uh, I can, if I could show you, uh, just a minute, I'll uh, like to show you agil marmalos. This agil marmalos is a three-leaved thing. Uh, we uh, apply this to the Lord Shiva's idol, and we use this in many other conditions, in conditions of indigestion. Many people have uh, the problems where uh, just immediately when they eat food, they have to go to the toilet to pass stools. This problem can be easily solved with this leaf or this plant known as agile marmalos. Uh, it is the bilv. It is known as bilv in Sanskrit. Uh, I'll uh, like to show here it is. Uh, it is a three leaved uh, structure, bilv, agile marmalos. So uh, this is very good for uh, drinking in conditions where uh, we have uh, acidity, stomach problems, where we feel uh, sore belchings. In these things, it may help. So I would consider this would be the uh, top 10 things, top 10 herbs according to Ayurveda, which uh, if someone has to start with Ayurveda, has to know. Yeah. Great, excellent overview. <laughs> Indeed. Now I've been hearing, been hearing um, this word dosha. I was wondering, could you please explain what what that means? Uh, yes, uh, exactly. Uh, this is the basic question which comes with Ayurveda, because uh, whenever someone, a practitioner of Ayurveda, or a knower of Ayurveda, or a person from Ayurveda field, talks about things, talks about diseases. He talks about vata, pitta, and kapha, right? And this is how you pronounce vata, pitta, and kapha, right? Uh, it basically, these are the three types of energy of the human body. These three energies are the basis of human body. Every body part or every cell of our body has all these three forces. These are considered to be humors. Uh, in English, they call it humors, H-U-M-O-R-S, right? According to Ayurveda, we call them doshas. We call them dosha. The word dosha actually means the one which is vitiated or which is bad. But 
as we say these three are the basic energies of the body or the basic three rooms of the human body the basic three parts of every cell so uh, now the question comes then why is the word dosha used for it or the one which is vitiated right uh, it is said to be vitiated because once one of these three starts vitiating or gets into a bad condition then the body is sure to get some or the other disease now the level of disease may range from very mild to very severe according to the vitiation of this doshas now uh, explaining further what is vat what is pit and what is kapha if i uh, i have to explain someone who uh, doesn't at all know about what with cough i would like to explain it as uh, what as air it is air it is the air surrounding us it is made up of two components air and the sky or the ether so when these two combine all the properties which these two combine and get together will be there in what so what is the air in the body so what does the air does in the nature it gives movement to everything so in our body also whatever movement we do whatever uh, movements even when i am moving my hand even my eyes are moving this all movements are regulated by this force known as what now the second one which comes is pitt pitt is the fire it is the fire or the metabolism of our body uh, as we see pitt uh, can be symbolized by the uh, as we have the solar energy we have the sun uh, it regulates our uh, surroundings it helps kills the extra bacteria surrounding us it gives us energy it uh, makes us bright these all are also the qualities of pit so this pit in our body is the power of digestion or the power of metabolism in our body the third dosha is kapha now kapha is uh, uh, i'd like to explain pit all, uh, just a second i like to explain pit as the one which is made up of fire and the one which is made up of water so it is a combination of fire and water it also has liquid and on the same time it also has the burning power or the digestion power similarly our digestive juices which we consider are digestive juices they have the power to digest to metabolize but they are in liquid forms so that is what pitta is it resides in each and every cell of the human body the third dosha is kapha it, it is air oh, it is water according to the human body or the nature uh, according to the nature we see water uh, the work of water is to keep moving freely uh, to transport the nutrition to transport uh, the important channels uh, to uh, transformize food into liquid form these all things are kapha so these three are the basic doshas where vat stands for air pit stands for fire and kapha stands for water so these three are the basic guiding forces of our human body and all these three forces must remain in a very balanced condition in order for us to remain healthy in a state of perfect health and to remain disease free so the ways of ayurveda are basically said to be uh, keeping in balance all these three things so once we start eating only hot food or only chilies the pit in our body will get vitiated we will feel warmth in our body it is because of the pit increase once we start taking only drinks or uh, cold drinks or uh, say the drinks which have more fluid content then the cough in our body is to be increased if this cough increases we will get common cold cough uh, pneumonia or the problems with secretions of our body would be increased and the third thing where we start taking dry items uh, very dry things 
in which there is like popcorns then the bath in our body would be increased this will cause dryness of the body this will cause pain in the body at many places so this is the basic idea of doshas i hope you uh, you'll get this yes yeah yes it's like uh, balancing all the elements within us okay. yes yes exactly fantastic and these three are the forces sorry what was that and these these three vat pitt and kapha these are the forces residing in each and every cell of our human body and that is why we need to balance these also yeah yes indeed have you got any more questions yeah there's a couple more questions yeah. um the food habits according to arabic uh what the um food habits like the eating habits according to um arabic um so do you eat according to your particular dosha or is it a balanced diet that you actually use um yeah wow it is a wonderful question uh, as i have said uh, before also uh, when i told about methods of treatment i told that uh, one should use medicines or herbs which are growing in their own surroundings this is what basically true for each and everything in ayurveda uh, that is where about the food we know that uh, eating the food which is available surrounding us is the best in this day of modernization or say globalization there are many foods which are imported from other countries uh, even the rice or uh, the rice grains which grow in australia have yeah. a completely different constitutional property chemical constitution than the rice grains which grow in india so that is where the difference lies and uh, so ayurveda says that whatever grows in your surrounding in your nature or your natural habitat is the most suitable for you now talk, talking about foods the first thing in ayurveda is uh, said when we take our food the first thing which we should take keep in our mind is we should again have a balanced diet now the balanced diet would again include all the forms solid liquid and semi solid foods uh, it has ayurveda also talks about the five tastes uh, sweet salty sour the pungent the bitter and the astringent taste so the six tastes are also important what ayurveda says that in each and every of our diet we should take all these six tastes or rasa or uh, you may say the uh the flavors right so we should always take in each and every food but when our disease condition is not in a balanced state like if someone has diabetes uh, he, they cannot take sugar or they should not take sweet food so according to their disease they have then to modify their diet also so uh, this is where ayurveda states that for a natural habit or natural per, naturally healthy person who is fit who is healthy they should take the food which has all the six tastes all, all the six flavors the other thing would be a very balanced diet all types of foods uh, the other thing the third thing which ayurveda says it is we should divide our stomach into three portions it uh, there is a chapter in uh, charak samhita where uh, they have mentioned about uh, dividing the stomach into three parts these three parts should be one part for the solid food one part for the liquid food and the third part should be kept empty we should never eat too much of food that our complete stomach is filled with food we should eat, take one third of uh, solid food one third of liquid food and the one third that remains should be kept empty <coughs> excuse me that's okay <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> now 
in a disease and a healthy condition uh, there are different food uh, habits as i told now the natural foods which we which grow surrounding us are the most suitable for us again now uh, many people talk about that uh, the spices indian spices are very good and many people import these indian spices but in indian conditions these spices may be uh, good for the indian people but once someone who is not habituated to taking that hot food takes that spices can cause many other problems to these people like stomach ulcers <coughs> or uh, say acidity problems hyperacidity problems uh, digestion problems burning problems burning sensation fever all these things may happen when someone who is not used to these spices takes these spices now about the food habits many say that uh, india has hindu culture or hinduism and uh, they say hinduism believes in a vegetarian diet this is where uh, again ayurved contradicts somewhat <coughs> <coughs> sorry again ayurved says that even non veg food non vegetarian food or the meats are necessary in many conditions or many ways in many places like when someone who is staying in a very cold environment if he only tries to survive on a herbal diet it becomes very difficult because sometimes that heat from the meat is necessary in certain conditions in certain diseases also some part of non vegetarian diet is required ayurved doesn't say that you have to be a vegetarian in order to remain healthy there are many body kinds there are many body types as i said kaf now when a person of kaf takes a lot of meat or lot of liquid diet it is going to harm him so when we talk about food habits we can take all the food which is surrounding us which is suitable for us and which is good for us uh, because uh, it also depends on a person to person as you asked in the question that is where i liked your question that uh, should someone take the diet according to their dosha now uh, when we talk about these dosha uh, this dosha Uh, is based on prakruti like every person is different this is what ayurved believes and uh, that that is where ayurved divides persons into a particular prakruti or a basic type so your dosha may be kapha my dosha may be vat and kapha together or someone else's dosha may be pitta so according to this also someone can change their diets because someone who has who has pitt predominance would be a person who remains very angry he uh, gets anger very fast he gets irritated very fast because that pitt in his body is his constitution and tends him to have that kind of uh, nature right so when such kind of a person has to take food he should take the food which are uh, good in uh, say liquid diets milk or which are cold in potency which will help pacify his pitta dosh so you said very rightly that one should also take care of his dosha while taking into consideration his food habits okay yeah, yeah. um and that's very fascinating thank you so much Don Juan Tari for sharing an insight into Ayurveda, and um, I I really learnt a lot and just how important it is to um, think of the environment we live in and eating the foods you know growing in nature in our environment. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing that with us. Yes, yeah. thank you.